Hello and welcome to EJC News Focus. With an ageing population across Europe and the incidence of cancer set to soar, the need for oncologists has never been greater. But is the specialty ready to recruit and train enough young doctors to meet the rising demand? And how tough a career choice is oncology? I asked five opinion leaders for their views. For me, it's very attractive because it's a discipline where you still have a lot of progress to make. There are still a lot of questions. We cure 55, 58% of patients with cancer, so you can still improve dramatically and so have a major action. So this by itself is already a challenge. It's quite a broad specialty. You know, multiple organs being affected, many medical complications from both the disease and treatment. So many clinicians, when they try oncology, realise that it's really quite exciting from the point of view of the breadth of, of the problems. Of course, there are lots of developments, there's lots of research opportunities as well. This is a very rewarding specialty and it's very interesting in terms of biology, in terms of research, in terms of being able to do clinic and research at the same time. But it's also a very demanding specialty, uh, emotionally speaking, and our, the dedicated hours. Uh, it is a difficult uh, discipline because you have to bring uh, bad news to the patient, you have to be very strong yourself and to be able to cope with such an environment where you face death and life. I suppose the thing that people worry about is, you know, can I cope with the fact that patients are going to die and, and you know, is it, is it a gloomy specialty? I would say generally not, you know, I mean clearly there are sad times, there are, there are difficult cases. Um, but uh, the, the benefits that we can offer to our patients more than outweigh that. In Europe we are also facing uh, more women going into medicine and since it is a very heavy discipline, sometimes some women may prefer to have a different type of discipline such as uh, ophthalmology or dermatology because it's somewhat lighter uh, than uh, oncology. What I would say is that if you are not passionate about it, for the sake of the patient and for the sake of yourself, you should not choose this uh, specialty. In our program in Toronto, we had 20 or 25 applicants for six places last year, and they're high caliber applicants. I mean, it's, it's very hard to choose amongst them. Uh, and they're all very excited about oncology and uh, what their work life could be like in that area. We are going to face a shortage of medical oncologists very soon. So you know that the population is getting older, that the incidence of cancer is increasing sharply. And it's already very clear that we are not going to have enough medical oncologists to take care of patients. There's a limitation on the number of jobs available, not because there's a limitation on the number of sick patients that one could be looking after, or patients that one could keep from getting sick, but because the government is rationing out costs as carefully as they can, and I, I do believe they have to do that, but we're struggling to get more positions for oncologists and more efficient ways of delivering care, working with nurses, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, and so on. Uh, so that's going to be an ongoing uphill struggle, I think, for not just Canada, but the United States, Britain, uh, you're all of Europe and all countries, because none of us have endless resources. So, especially in a difficult economic climate, the challenges of oncology don't just lie in dealing with the disease. It's a competitive discipline, and while organisations like ESMO and EORTC offer fellowships to help some young professionals on their way, these opportunities can never be available to all. I asked our experts how they'd suggest that young oncologists might best prepare themselves for a long and interesting career. What I would tell young medical oncologists is that, first of all, it's just great if they have some research experience early on. They don't necessarily have to devote their entire career to research, but just to be able to do some research, whether clinical research, translational research, basic research, 
um, at the beginning of their career and if at all possible in another country is such a valuable experience for their entire life that I strongly recommend them to look for this. Perhaps the top tip would be to try and do your oncology training in a large comprehensive cancer centre where you get a broad range of experience or if you can't do that move during your oncology training so you see a different way of doing things. I also travelled to the United States when I was a young oncologist and um, I must say I had a wonderful experience there. It uh, impacted on all my future career very significantly and uh, this is perhaps even more needed today than in the past because of the complexity of oncology. So doing a research fellowship somewhere gives you a unique opportunity and the time to, um, to capture this complexity. And I think that it gives a lot of satisfaction and it helps you then later on to understand better the advances also to be more critical towards some advances which are not real advances. I think you have to choose something you really love and feel strongly about um, to be able to feel that you can make a change in things you see that you may not see are being done in the best way. And often I think the young people have the best eye to what's not happening optimally and many times feel that they can't change that. But they can and they will and I think they need to believe that. Self-belief then and passion, coupled with as much research and travel as you can manage in the early years, may just be the key ingredients for success. With thanks to all our contributors, that's it for this EJC News Focus.